Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. I am sitting out here with my to-do list, my garden notebook, and I am trying to remember everything that I remembered in the middle of the night during my insomnia and get it all written down. And then I'm gonna walk around the property to see what I missed, what else needs to be done and just make an even further to-do list. And the reason why I do this is because it's the only way I can stay sane this time of year. It's that time of year again. So during this spring rush of trying to get everything done, including planting all of my vegetable garden, I'm also trying to really expand our food forest and get it planted now before it gets too hot. We're also in the throes of, you know, trying to harvest what we have from our spring vegetables and get them sold. So we attended a market this past weekend that was amazing. It was huge, it was great, it was fun, but it was a ton of work to prepare for. And we did good, but I wish I could say we sold out, but we came back with a lot of produce and a lot of plants that didn't get sold. want to document how huge this kale is before I harvest it yeah yeah it's like up to my thigh like really 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 big collars are almost as big too but I harvest as many of the leaves as I can for good marketable produce and I put it right into the water and then from there, it'll go into refrigeration quickly. I'm very fortunate that today is in the 60s. So it's a perfect temperature to be harvesting in so it does not too hot where everything starts to oil. So wish us luck that the rain holds off for our market and we get to have an incredible turnout and sell out of all this produce. Because honestly, if it doesn't sell out, I don't know that I'm gonna have energy left to try to preserve it all because we're either going to have to blanch and freeze or dehydrate all these greens if we don't sell them obviously i'll try, try to sell on facebook first but it's a lot it's a lot of stuff everybody's glad it's market day is it yummy <laughs> you like that mary jane how about you rosemary you enjoying it Bowser likes it so did the box and of course the chickens and the ducks get the bulk of it. And they are excited. That is a duck water for anybody who wants to criticize dirty water. Don't, it's a duck water. It's always dirty. Y'all, when I say I've been busy all day, I ain't playing. I am running out of steam, but I've got all the kale bundled up. I had it in the cooler and then I just bundled it. So I'm gonna put it back in the cooler. I had to borrow a cooler from a friend cause I ran out of space for the collards. All bundled up, ready to go. Bok choy and lettuce will go in that cooler. Ryan is busy making walls for our trailer so we can get some protection because there's a lot of plants traveling to this farmer's market. This is all stuff we grew, y'all. So now I'm faced with having to find homes for the plants and process all of the produce and preserve it or try to pass it along to others. 
The event was amazing. The event is called May's Farmer's Market. And it is held once a year on the third Saturday of May. Is that right? Second Saturday of May. It was the 18th. So whatever Saturday of the month of May that falls on. Every year, it's only once a year, and it had over 180 vendors, with a huge majority of those being agriculture vendors, because this is a market that actually supports agriculture education in schools. So all of the vendor fees and raffle winnings all go to support agriculture in the schools, and they choose a different school every year to donate the money to. It's a really great way to support agriculture in your community and it was full of tons of different types of livestock they had alpacas cows horses pigs goats sheep bunnies ducks geese chickens you name it they had it i mean they even had exotics like uh snakes and lizards and turtle tortoises and and all kinds of things you name it they had it but now i'm a little bit behind in my vegetable gardening planting and i need to get ahead of things this week so that i can be going into the season without too much burnout because this is the time of year where i just burn my candle at both ends it's inevitable no matter how i strategize and i know i'm going to be exhausted for these few weeks, <laughs> months, how long has it been? <laughs> Where there's just too much on my plate and then it starts to get easier. And you know, it's part of the ebb and flow of homesteading. There are gonna be times where you're super busy getting stuff done and there's gonna be other times where you're waiting for the harvest and having more downtime. So we try to utilize this time to be grateful for our future harvest because we know it's going to come and when we do get to that chance when we do get to that point that we're harvesting this food we will be thanking our past selves for this harvest it will be a wonderful abundance that will make us feel so grateful that we put in this extra effort so you end up getting rewarded and it's worth it but for now I'm going to make my to-do list and then I'm going to dehydrate some herbs that are going to help support my body while I rest and recuperate from this weekend and try to get ahead this week. I'm going to need that extra boost from my herbal friends that we have growing here in our garden. So it's a lot of stuff that I brought to the market that didn't sell and all of it are very medicinal and helpful supportive herbs that I can just make into a tea. So I'm just gonna get them in the dehydrator and enjoy that bounty. This dehydrator is back to the hilt. We've got lemon balm, holy basil or Tulsi, spearmint, fennel leaf, and anise hyssop. It's gonna be a very licorice -y flavored tea, but it's going to help support my body so well. All right, I just took all of the herbs out of the hydrator, out of the dehydrator, and they are all nice and crispy, very dry. So I'm going to pull them off their stems for easier packaging and get them bagged up so I can start drinking this lovely tea. Well, I'm not afraid to admit defeat or failure. A lot of the plants that we brought to the market in the back of the trailer got severely damaged. We had had a lot of rain leading up to this event and everything was super hydrated. So it cracks easier, breaks easier. So a lot of my plants ended up being pretty damaged, but the tomatoes we had in the back of the Explorer looked great and we sold a lot of those. But what we didn't hardly sell, but a head or two of is the produce. Yes, I'm as shocked as you are. I was so surprised. There was nobody else there selling produce and we had beautiful produce and we only sold a very small amount. I mean, just look at it, it's gorgeous. This has already regrown this week. But the good thing is, is 
I was able to deepen a relationship. I have a friend who has been able to take some of our eggs to market. And after she found out that I had a lot of leftover produce, she actually took some of that to market as well. So we're going to try that again today. So I'm harvesting some more collards and kale because we've already gone through those. I was able to sell the collards to a chef friend and I was able to um, unload most of the collards through friends stopping by to buy it after they saw the event post. They stopped by my house and got some and then we cooked up the rest. I actually have kale chips in the dehydrator now that I'm sure the kids are going to devour before lunch. So while it is hard to do hard things, especially when you have autoimmune issues, it's still worth it because the connections that I've made are hopefully going to lead to even more sales in the future. And I have people already messaging me asking if I have any more collars and kale. And as you can see, they regrow fast. So I will continue to sell them until they bolt. After a brief soak while I'm harvesting to make sure any of the caterpillars are off, and that it's all clean and ready to go. I'm gonna drain the water and bundle them up into bunches. I go about a handful, but a bunch is about that much to me. So yeah, so I just grip as many stems as I can fit in my hand and I twist tie them up and put them back into a cooler with ice. So that is what she'll take to the market with her and it should keep her all evening. This is an evening market, so she'll be picking it up later this afternoon, along with some eggs. All right, got a layer of ice packs on the bottom, and I put a piece of cardboard so that it's not touching the vegetables and freezing them, and then pack them in here. Got kale and then collards, and then the bok choy and lettuce will go on top. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. The bok choy and collards are in the fridge already. So I'll wait until she's about ready to come pick them up. So is setting up at the farmer's market worth it? I'd say it is. And for one reason and one reason, it will always be worth it for the Mays Farmer's Market event. And that is to support agriculture in schools. Our $25 vendor fee goes directly to helping them. No money's taken off the top at all. It all goes to ag education. And for that, I am so happy to help. I went to an agricultural high school and I know that it defined my future very much. And I want to help support others who are hoping to get into agriculture.